Uh, and let's do it. Can you just st uh, tell me your name and, and who you are? Just like that style. Richard Rodney Bennett. I'm a composer. I'm like that. Mr. Richard, how do you approach a composition? If it's, if it's an instrument that I don't know, if I was writing for organ, for example, I would do a lot of homework, you know, listening to lots of organ music and so on. But writing for two pianos, I've been playing two pianos and piano duet um, since I was a child. And I'm a pianist, so I know a lot about the repertoire. And it wasn't as though I had to go and listen to a lot of two piano music. And I won't say it's, a, it's going to be a fantastic piece, we hope it is, but it's a medium that I know and understand very well. And it's a medium that people need a repertoire for. They need two piano music. Not just because it's a competition, but because there are a great many marvellous two piano teams. And um, it's, a, it's a medium that I know very well. So what's the difference between writing for two pianos versus one piano? Great, great many more notes. Um, I mean, the... the Playing two pianos, apart from anything else, is a very specialised skill. And I, say, I said I've been doing it all my life. But if you sit down with a concerto-type pianist to play two pianos, it's like, um, you know, you're in hell because they don't understand the idea of the balance between two players. And um, I, can't, I can't explain the difference writing for two pianos as opposed to one, but playing them is a very, very, very different thing. Mm. Are there any, any things that stand out that are very uh, much more difficult for the two pianos? Um, well, actually, I think piano four hands, that's to say two people sitting at one piano keyboard, is much more difficult because the physical proximity is, is, very, is kind of disturbing. If you're a pianist and you're used to that freedom and suddenly you have someone there, you know, and you, you hit their hand or something by mistake, and it can be very unnerving. And uh, two pianos, you have much more freedom and much more, much more space, much more the possibility of virtuoso playing. Um, but I can't say exactly what the problems are because it varies with every piece, but it certainly is a very stimulating medium to write for. And what was, what was your interest in, in taking on this challenge? Because I, I want to write for, for mediums, that's to say, types of players who need a repertoire. When I was a student, and I was a student of Pierre Boulez in Paris, and in those days we used to write for the wildest combinations of instruments, you know, that would never really be gathered together in one room, ever, because it was so exotic and so much fun. But more and more, as I grow older, I want to write music that people really need, that they will really be pleased to have. So, for example, I've written a, a saxophone quartet because they were wonderful. It was a commission. They were wonderful saxophone quartets, and I like saxophone as an instrument, and it's already had three commercial recordings and been played all over the place because people need, mm -hmm. need, need that, need good saxophone music. So what is your opinion about contributing to, to, this, to this catalog for the art form? Well, I've done it. I've written a lot of two piano music, and I keep coming back to it. It's difficult, um, and I'm very pleased to feel that I am contributing something that is maybe in a long line of great pieces. I hope so. Let's see. Yeah. It was, and I mean, how do you feel about the Drainoff organization and and being honored with this and them approaching for this commission. What, what was that process like? Did they come to you? They came to me, first of all, to ask for a concerto for two pianos and orchestra. And I didn't want to do that um, because for me, two pianos and an orchestra, a modern orchestra, is too much. It's too many notes. It's too many players. It's too busy. And my publisher said to me, um, you know, there's, there's a very, very small... Um, repertoire of concertos that have really taken off is not a very practical proposition. Whereas um, uh, two pianos solo, so to speak, is, is for real. And I was very honoured because I knew about the Drenoff um, competition and um, because obviously it was going to attract, it is going to attract, great young players. So, I mean, what composer could resist that? 
if you didn't if you didn't like the medium or or weren't a pianist um it might not be attractive but to me it's extremely attractive do you get to do you connect with this with the student or the players do you ever have interactions with them or um i always tell my own students my composition students that they have to write everything into the score so that there can't be any questions um, you get you get students who who write don't write dynamics. They don't tell you how loud it is. They don't write marks of articulation, so you don't know if it's smooth or jumpy or what. And I always say you're not going to be there at the rehearsals. You have to tell the players what you want. And so I I do <coughs> I do tell the players as much as possible without getting in their hair, you know. Mm -hmm. And recently, um, an opera of mine was done. It was done at City Opera and it was done at Glimmerglass. And it was an opera I wrote when I was in my 20s. And after the dress rehearsal, and it was very well done, I told the conductor two things. One was that the gong was too small and one, that one little bit was too, too slow. And I was very proud of that because I had told them enough so the piece came out right. There was a lot of student compositions, you know, it would, it would be absolute hell because the players wouldn't know what to do. Um, so I don't like, and this is a long answer to your question, I don't necessarily want to work with players. If they want to play the pieces to me, that's fine, but it's not necessary. Maybe with a new orchestral piece, I might go in and just sort of sort out problems of balance or something. Mm -hmm. But it should all be done on the page. What's it, what's it like to listen to your, your music being played by hundreds of... Our... <laughs> Well, hundreds, I, I, um, I don't know. I have heard, I've done this before, a piece for viola, and by the, by the 15th time I was losing my mind, you know. Um, because I, was, I wasn't concentrating on them so much as players, that's how they played my piece, and I don't really like listening to my own music after the first few times. And as for pieces from the remote past, it's like having one's old love letters read out. You think, how can I, I mean... I meant it, but this is terrible having to listen to all this. I'm always interested in the next piece. You know, I have four or five commissions lined up down the road, and I'm interested in what such and such is going to turn out like. What, so we have all these different players, there's an ambitious young artist competing, and what does it mean for them to actually win this, to win the drain off? Is that, is that going to help their career? What is that? I think it's going to help their career enormously. And in the, in the 40s, for example, two pianos were it was a, it was a fashionable medium. There were a lot of two piano teams and a lot of two piano recordings. And these days, it's slightly different. It's not, I know this myself, it's not so easy to get work as a two piano team. And so something like the train off competition is extremely important because it's, a, it's a, putting a medal on them. You know, this is, this is the best. It's important. They, they come from all around the world, which is quite interesting. I guess. Uh, t tell me about your work with Stuart Robertson. Well, Stuart Robertson was a, 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 is a marvelous conductor. And I knew the name, but I didn't know him. And he, in fact, was the conductor who conducted my opera, The Minds of Sulphur, recently. And um, uh, he had heard it when he was 17, when it was first done. And um, I guess it made an impression. He remembered it all through the years. And when um, it became impossible for somebody else to write an opera for Glimmerglass, which is a great opera organization upstate, he suggested the Minds of Sulphur, and they said yes. And we became friends. We became good friends immediately. And we have, um, we're both particularly interested in little known. English music between the wars, when there were some very, very good composers who have partly been forgotten. So we have a lot to talk about. And he has a wonderfully open and um, forward looking way of thinking about music, you know, no, no. And he has no uh, conductor um, s star things, you know, I'm a great conductor. He's at the service of the music, and um, I think he's a marvelous conductor and a great guy. Is there a particular way that you begin each piece? 
just sitting around and worrying and messing around and watching television and reading books and sketching and throwing it away in it and then and then it something comes through and I've always said and I've been writing music since I was six so this is not overnight that it's like learning to swim all over again you think I can't I can't do this anymore and then you do find you're afloat eventually when I was very young when I was at school and I was always writing music I didn't really I wasn't self-conscious in that way and so I used to just write all the time without thinking what the hell I was doing but now many many years later when I've earned my living since I was 19 as a composer, it gets harder and harder. I can't really account for why, but I'm, one is more and more worried about one's ability to do it, still. But it turns out okay, generally. And if it doesn't, I just get out of it, that's same because I can't do this piece. So there are, writer, there are writer's blocks sometimes? Oh yes, absolutely. And one of my sisters is a very distinguished poet. And we talk to one another by email all the time. And how are you doing? And are you able to write? And sometimes she's completely blocked like that. And so am I. And you just wait. There's no magic spell. If it's a commercial job, you have to do it. I mean, nobody cares if you feel like writing or you're not very well or anything. And I recently did an important film score. And I, I thought, I can't do this anymore. I, 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 I used to be able to write very fast for films. And um, I was lying awake at night, worrying and worrying and worrying. And I went through my thing of telling myself, nobody cares whether you, you feel like it or not. You've got to write the score, and I did. And I think they were very pleased with it. But commercial music is, is brutal. You just have to do it. <laughs> I know. What's the, what's the, uh, what's the importance of, of new music being commissioned? You know, I don't quite know the answer to that. To keep a lot of composers going, I think. Um, quite often, I think, these days, I think these, these kids should stop writing music. They should, they're not composers. They think that it's a glamorous life and something, a lot of money, it's not. But the, the one thing you can't tell a student is, as far as I'm concerned, you can't, shouldn't be doing this. This is not your, this is not really your, your nature to be a composer. But I try, and, I try to steer students, if I teach, and I don't like teaching and I don't do it very much, I try to steer them towards some area of music which I feel is more in keeping with their abilities. Like writing educational music, and that's not a put down. I'll, I'm very fascinated, but it's not the same as symphonies. Um, and, and occasionally you find someone who really has a talent for writing a large scale structure but not very often but uh, you new music is needed just as because people have to write it it's like painting could have stopped with you know in the 1960s but it doesn't and it grows and it changes all the time and the climate in new music is very different these days from what it was when I was a student there were so many composers all trying for the same little space but there, so now there's, there's less composers or more composers? Many more composers. Thousands more composers. Huh. I mean, I was very lucky that I came from a generation um, as a student that was, that was very talented. And there were about seven or eight of us, and we all became known for, in the profession. And um, for, in very different characters. And now there are, you know, if I really got down to it, I could come up with about a thousand names of young composers in England alone who are trying to get performances, trying to get a publisher, trying to make some money, trying to keep going until they, you know, are successful. It's a terrible business. What, what, what's successful? Successful, being played, being commissioned, um, being needed, sounds rather sentimental, but, you know, the music is needed by people. Mm. That's successful. I'm not talking about the Academy Awards. It's not American Idol, you know. It's, but um, but having a having a prof profession, having a career. How do you feel about your music being international around around the world? This blast of your work. Well, um, 
It would be sad, I think, to write a lot of music and have it disappear without a trace. But, but what I like best, what I feel is the best thing I can do, is to um, have the music played all over the place, because it does suggest, as I say, that people want it. And I've been in, in Australia and New Zealand quite a lot, and people come up to me and say, we, we grew up on your children's pieces for piano. We sang in your children's opera, you know, stuff like that. And that is a, that is a true reward. Because that music has, has gone on, it's, it's still alive, it's not lying there on the shelf, dead. That's, that's, that's great. Is that all right? Yeah. Oh, I, one last thing. Can you just tell me, and you, you've answered this I think already, but just tell me um, how you felt when you were approached by the Drena Foundation to, com to you know, commission for these original works. And just repeat the question, I, when I was approached by I Felt This. Shut up! She's, my old cat is deaf as a post. And she tends to wail because she thinks I... Shh! Shut up! You better wait for her to be quiet. <laughs> okay. So, you say, so when I was approached by the Drana Foundation to write original commission piece for the two piano competition, I felt this. When I was approached by the Drana Foundation to write an original two piano piece for this competition, I was delighted because it's a, it's a medium that I really love. I've been playing piano four hands and two pianos since I was a little boy. I know the repertoire very well and I've made various tries at writing for two pianos. Um, and I hope this one will be successful, both for the players and for me.